In this video, I'm going to talk about a very specific subject of a specific matter of audio and music production that has sort of enraptured me for the past few years. And today I finally made a breakthrough in it, and I wanted to share it with everybody else just in case there's somebody else out there who's interested in this audio sample like I am and wants to do what I did with it. It's not very complicated, but it took me a little while to figure out, and I wanted to share it with you all. So here we go. Made a tweet today. I just found a solution to one of my most puzzling musical production problems that has stuck with me for a few years. Very satisfying. And that musical production problem relates to this. I'll play you a few things from some soundtracks, and uh, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's a little bit of a uh, Leon, the, prof the professional. This is from the Golden Eye film. And this is from Golden Eye uh, for the Nintendo 64, the video game. So the most interesting thing to me that they all have in common is that one particular sample. Now, if you've played, like I did a lot when I was a kid, GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64, you heard that sample a whole bunch because it's all over the soundtrack. It's all over the game. It's, it's everywhere. I don't know if it's in every cue of the soundtrack, but it might as well be. And I never really knew what to make of that sound. I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it was. I could tell some. This was a piano. This was a drum. This was brass. This was an electric guitar. But what's that sound? It sounds like it sounds like a maybe like a metal pipe in a big cavern or something like that. Fitting that this is the track caverns. I didn't really know what to make of it. I just thought it was the, the Bond sound. I thought it was like it was like saying the word Bond, like James Bond. Um, looking online. I see that other people have similar questions about it, wondering where is it from? What is it? What instrument even is it? And where did it come from? And where can I find a sample of it? So I was curious about it. I said, wow, where the heck is this sample from? I want to find out where it is so I can you know, use it for myself because it sounds freaking awesome. So I figure why not just go to the man himself Grant Kirkhope, one of the key members of the small GoldenEye team, master of the music. And 2014, I just said, hey, Grant Kirkhope, tell me what, what this percussive sound is in this track. I've been curious to know where it is, and I also heard it in the professional soundtrack, which is by Eric Serra, um, which, as far as we know, didn't have Grant Kirkhope involved in it at all. And if you look around, you'll find more examples of this sound and other non-related things. I think somebody once said there's a Rolling Stones tune with it. It's all over the place. Grant Kirkhope very quickly responded the same day. It's called Infinite from an Emu Proteus FX. It's, a sen it's actually either a splash cymbal or tambourine pitched really low. So that's quite nice. Also, I think a cool thing that we'll see if we look up GoldenEye film. Music is by Eric Serra of the film. It's a person who did the music for Leon the Professional, the first clip that we heard. So, who knows? A lot of weird coincidence going, coincidences happening here, but the facts is we know is that this is a patch called Infinite from the Emu Proteus FX, so said from Grant Kirkhope himself. Now, I thought for a short time that I was the only kid on the block who was interested in this. I had this egotistical thought like, mm, nobody else caught on this than me. Not so fast. Going back to 2010, at the er, at, I mean, at least, um, we just searched Grant Kirkhope Proteus. You see, many people ask this question or ask basically questions of what gear he used to make the GoldenEye soundtrack. It's called Infinite from the Proteus FX. Proteus FX. Many people uh, curious about it. So 
It's kind of an interesting thing. But we have now we, now we have something to go off of. I'm not from the generation uh, where outboard, you know, rack mount samplers and MIDI equipment is a, is really a thing. <coughs> now we live in the beautiful bad days of uh, digital audio workstations and uh, cheap and small digital samples that you can take anywhere on a little hard drive or whatever. So for someone like me, uh, a device like this is pretty foreign. Don't really know uh, what these uh, what these are about. These are different uh, modules of the Emu Proteus line, rack mounted synth and sampler modules. So just how now you would have, you know, a synth VST or a sampler VST. This was your sampler, and it had your samples in it and your patches in it, and you would connect MIDI data, you know, in and out to it and control it with your controllers or your sequencer or whatever, as an outboard unit. It's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, but for me, I didn't really even know what this thing was at the time. At the time, and so Grant Kirkup said that it was the Proteus FX from 1994 that uh, he used and found that sound on, called Infinite. And so, uh, looking it up, the patch list of the Proteus FX, you see indeed there are a whole bunch of things. You know, a piano, uh, Fender Stratocaster, acoustic guitar strings, pizzicato, you know, all this stuff. There is one called Infinite, and this person uh, described it as cool percussive effects. And if you listen to it, to the demo, indeed, that's our sound. That's the one. So I figure, like, this is the jackpot. What I have a great interest in when I find something really cool and interesting like this, is I want to find I want to get the authentic original experience, the original sample, the original everything. I want to have in in my hands the exact same thing that Grant Kirkhope had, the exact same thing that Eric Serra had when they were making their great music that is now iconic to us. I I have a real sort of dead set desire to have the the original, if I can. Not a copy, not a facsimile, not what it sounds sort of like, and I recorded it in my basement. I want the original, no matter how impractical it might be. So, want the original? He says it's a Proteus FX. Why don't you just buy a Proteus FX? So we go to eBay here, and 250 95 you know. And I figured, uh, I figured, you know, for one sample, buying a whole one of these might not be, uh, you know, the most practical purchase so maybe one day in the future I definitely would like to get one especially if I could actually know how to use it and wrangle it in a practical way so there's always that for the future but I figured what would be the next best thing just to get the original sample you know in any way that's usable to me and doesn't not going to cost me a hundred bucks plus shipping to get a rack mount unit that I probably don't even know how to work in the first place. So I figured my experiences with GoldenEye the video game for the Nintendo 64. So I, I'm, I'm aware that there are th sample packs of, you know, games out there. People rip samples in various ways uh, from games directly. So you have the direct sample from that game. So I figured GoldenEye is a very popular game. It's already, you know, decades old at this point surely someone must have taken the time to uh, go and make a sample pack of it and multiple pe multiple people have this one here is from a reddit post and I'll, I'll touch back on this uh later but really um all i'll say about the sample packs right now is that if you're looking for samples uh, that aren't related to the music if you're looking for things like the gunshots guard effects, uh, you know, any other, any sound effects that aren't music, uh, then one of these would be pretty good for you. Or one of these sound effects would be, would be great, you know, just... <laughs> weapons, you know... <coughs> you know, grunts. <coughs> sound effects are great for that, but for the music, uh, it's lacking, and I'll come back to that later when I come back into Ableton. So this, w this was not a solution. It was, it was not a solution to my my problem uh, because at the time I didn't know what I was looking for I didn't didn't know what I was looking for we'll come back to that so 
I figure, heck with it. I don't give a freaking heck about what some other guy does with extracting. I've extracted music from directly from a ROM um, one time before in a practical project, and that was to transcribe or not. That was to extract the MIDI from Resident Evil director's cut to get the direct MIDI for the mansion basement music. Now I figure extracting samples would be pretty easy, especially for Nintendo 64 era. And it turns out some some saints uh, have given us some tools here. GoldenEyeVault.com is a website here. And I really need to give major props to people like Subdrag and the other folks who uh, have put time into making these utility tools. The one that I used to achieve my success in this endeavor, at least until I own a Proteus FX, is called the N64 Soundbank Tool. Now there's another one called the N64 MIDI Tool that I will probably use at some point to try to work on extracting MIDI so I don't have to transcribe music. See, I, I, I transcribe a lot of music, I enjoy it, and I do it for my videos, but when it comes to something like game music, when the music is written in MIDI, or it's written in hex, or it's codified into the game, not streamed, but it's coded into the game, what I want to do is not spend time with my headphones and my little keyboard transcribing. I want to just extract it, and I want to get ex every single note exactly as the composer wrote it in front of me, and not have to go through my process my cognition and me introducing errors into the process and introducing my own bias and my own opinions to me that's the gold standard i want to have just the direct data from the composer and in this case if a game that, that uses midi then that's gonna be midi so it's a small tangent but really once i got here the whole matter was very easy and the answer is sound fonts now some of you if you're experienced in music production especially you know have been for a few years then you'll probably be familiar with what sound fonts are i have never worked with sound fonts in a in a big way or really in any way uh but recently because of this whole endeavor i've been trying to look into them a little bit more and it's pretty cool and i think i might get some some use out of them for various projects a sound font if you don't know is sample data ripped directly from the game ROM, directly from the game itself, the game image, ROM, whatever it happens to be. So it's th the samples are the samples from the game. And there's also associated data with it, like the like the envelope and uh, like reverb and you know the, the way it loops in the end and p pitch information. Basically, the sound font gives you the tool the samples the musical tools from whatever game it is and gives you control of it using midi to do whatever you want with it so i'm like this is perfect this is exactly what i'm looking for this is exactly what i need and so the n64 sound bank tool did the business it's very very simple utility very easy to use you open it up all right i opened it up selected golden eye uh american version plugged in the ROM and then I selected a particular track. It didn't it does doesn't matter because the whole game uses the same, I assume, bank of samples or bank of instruments. And then it spit out a DLS sound font file. Now uh, the, the most popular sound font file you'll find is .sf2. Um, but DLS is just as good so far as I can tell. Um, Ableton Live can uh, can directly process SF2 files. It's a very, very simple process. I'll show you one right now. So say I want to use uh, Super Mario RPG SF2. It's a, it's as simple as just dragging it into here. And it, it sort of just like uh, explodes out all the individual samples here. And then you can use whatever you want. So if I want to you know, use the SMRPG harpsichord. I just take it and I just drag it in here to a new thing. And there you go. Very easy to use. Very simple. So I figured I just want to do this with GoldenEye. Find the sample. 
of the of the metallic of the of the infinite one of the sample that was taken from the Proteus FX infinite or infinity one and then it's mine and then I can use it and I can do whatever I want with it it's fantastic and that's all there is to it really well that's not all there is to it uh, small little in go between is that uh, Ableton can handle SF2 files but not DLS files so I needed to find a program that did handle DLS files and thankfully there's a wonderful free sound font player called a uh, Sforzando by a company called Plogue, I, th or I think that's how you, pr how you pronounce it. And this is a free, uh, s very simple sound font player that accepts DLS. That was the big thing, the only thing for me. I wanted to need a sound font player that accepted DLS files and let me use them and manipulate them as I needed. So I had the GoldenEye sound font from the N64 sound bank tool. I have Sforzando, a VST plugin that works in a 64 bit VST plugin that works in Ableton Live and can read DLS sound fonts. So just put the two together and here it is on my little MIDI keyboard. That's it. My journey is until I until I own a Proteus FX, the hardware. This has been on my journey. I got the sample directly from the game, a direct rip from the game. You know, the the, the best I can get is to, in terms of quality of the original instrument used by the musical geniuses behind Goldeneye, and that was that. So, um, coincidentally, if you're not familiar with sound fonts, you can do other cool things with it. Uh, you know, that that sound, that the infinite sound, is just one of the dozens of other, you know, sounds in the game. And basically, anything that you hear in the soundtrack, you have control of any instrument, just like you have members of an orchestra. You can, you know, pick them out and call them out. So do you have here, but with Goldeneye. So uh, just you can just cy cycle through them with these with instruments. And now you have, for example, this is uh, from the beginning of Frigate, of the Frigate stage. That's pretty cool. You know, you got a bunch of, you know, very, very cool, useful things. Some they're in different keys. That's uh, that's archives. So uh, there's there's one weird weird thing where it, it, it has to do with with at the end at, when you hold the sample at the end it sort of loops in a sort of jagged way. I I get the feeling that some of the hardware or some of like the the way that the N64 processed audio smoothed that out in a way that it's maybe difficult or impossible to emulate on a computer. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but that's where I'm where I'm at right now. That's a relatively minor issue. And that brings me to why the sample packs were a less good option. So I have here loaded up uh, one of those, sa th th that sample pack, I believe from the Reddit thread, uh, it has all the musical samples, including uh, the infinite sample. Now, when I, when I would hear it for the first time, what I heard was this. Oh, actually what I heard was, I should say this, something like this. Remember what Grant Kirkhope said in his tweet to me, he said, uh, it's actually either a splash cymbal or tambourine pitched really low. And that seems to be the case. And actually, if I had a splash cymbal or tambourine, I'd like to try it out for myself, record it, and then pitch it down and see what it sounds like. At sort of normal pitch or whatever it was recorded at, this is what the infinite sounds like. It sounds sort of like a, a tinny, tambour you know, small tambourine. But then... And then you have that beautiful, you just pitch it down, you know, a few octaves, and there you go. You have the beautiful, wonderful, infinite sound. It's, and it's very simple. So 
The problem with this is that this is just the raw wave file. It's just a sample. It has no other data with it. It's just a sound, just like you would have like a song in a, in a way in a wave file. It just plays beginning to end, and that's it. It has a title. It has a length, and that and the the PCM data in it. The sound font, on the other hand, that we ha had with Sforzando, or we would have, you know, with an with an SF2 file. It has other data like the pitch center where it is you know where like middle c is and it has things like the end the looping the end the ending loop of each sample which is i, I mentioned before with sforzato how it's a little weird and jagged but it is there or not there if the case may be in sforzando you see if i if i hold the key down if i hold the key down it loops it loops it, it it keeps on going and so you can fade it out very nicely however with just the raw sample you hold it down it just ends so what you would have to do then if you didn't want it to work like that you'd have to work with your sample your sampler program and make a sustain mode here in in uh in ableton you can you know do things like this you have uh the sustain mode and you can you know, oh, I'm not doing this right. You have a, you know, like you choose the, the loop and the crossfade, and then you can have something like, something like that. But to me, that's a less perfect solution, uh, unless you really want to sort of get twisty and technical with manipulating the original sample in ways that you see fit, that you want to do whatever you want to do with. So, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I feel very, very much uh, relieved to have found the solution with the sound font and the Plogue uh, Sforzando. This has taken me a, a few years to sort of, you know, finally get to the bottom of, but I'm, I, it, it feels very good now to sort of have my hands on a piece of original material from a game that's beloved to me and so many others and the soundtrack is obviously a big part of that so hopefully this was helpful to maybe at least one of you <laughs> someone who was in my situation wanted to know where the sound was from had no idea wanted to know how to use it had no idea so hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on the classic golden eye sound effect that's how i knew it I'm sure many other people know it by different names or different titles, whatnot. So, hope it was helpful. Thank you very much for watching.